Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 jailbreak tutorial. So in this one, we're going to be looking at how to use your PS4 as a retro gaming console so that you can run your favorite retro games going from all the way back to things like the Commodore 64 and Atari to NES, Sega Master System, all the way up to Nintendo 64, PS1 and PSP games that you can all run on your PS4 using the homebrew app RetroArch. Now RetroArch is a front end for emulators and game engines and there is an unofficial port for it for the PlayStation 4 created by Osiris X. So we're going to be using this to run our favorite retro games on our PS4. I'm going to show you exactly how to get it all set up here in this video. And this is going to be different to the previous emulation video I did, which covered Sony's own software-based emulators for the PS4 that allow you to run PS1, PS2, PSP games and Sega Saturn games on your PS4. That is a great solution for those specific games, but if you want to run games from other consoles, then RetroArch is the go-to solution. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here. So first thing we're going to do, make sure you're running the jailbreak first of all, and we're going to go and run the Homebrew store because we can download RetroArch directly from the Homebrew store itself. So from here, we can just go into the store apps section and we have the RetroArch core installer and the RetroArch app itself. So we're going to download the RetroArch app. So download and install unofficial RetroArch by Osiris X, and that is now installed. And then if we press circle to go back, we're then going to press circle again and press X to go back in here. And we're also going to download the RetroArch core installer. So download and install this. So this is one gigabyte. So this is all of the emulator cores that are required to actually run games from all these different systems. Without it, you're not going to be able to run any of your games. Okay, there we go. Installation complete. We can press the options button to quit out of the homebrew store. And we now have the cores installer and RetroArch itself. So I'm just going to hit the options button on RetroArch. And I'll add that into my emulation folder with all of the other emulated games. And then we're going to run the RetroArch cores installer. And this will get all of the cores copied over to the data folder on the hard drive. So all you have to do is run it and then click OK. And you can see it's now installing 74 cores. So this is just meant to be an easy solution to get the cores copied over to the hard drive. You can use this homebrew app to install them. Now I do normally get people who have issues running this application where they run into some strange error and it's not able to run and install the cores. If that is the case, remember it could also be a storage issue. If you don't have enough storage space, you'll probably run into an error while trying to copy the cores over. So make sure you have enough space on your hard drive. And there we go. Once we're done, we can click OK and that should close out of the application. And once it's installed, we no longer need the cores installer. We can hit the options button and we can now get rid of that application. Okay, so if you run into any problems trying to use the RetroArch core installer, there is another option which is to install the files manually. So if you download from the link in the video description, the cores, it will be in a zip file. You can extract that zip file over to the root of a USB drive, plug that USB into your PS4, and then you can use the PS4 Explorer app. You just press left and right on the D-pad on PS4 Explorer to switch between the USB ports find the RetroArch folder and then you can press triangle and copy it and then you can press circle a few times to go back to the root directory then go to the data folder on the hard drive and then go down to the self folder and inside the self folder you want to just press triangle and paste the RetroArch folder and that will get all of the cores copied over manually to the hard drive which is exactly what the cores installer is doing except you've just done it manually so if you do have any problems running the core installer you can use the manual method instead. And now we should have RetroArch all ready to go. So we're going to run RetroArch. And it looks pretty bare bones initially. Also, it's kind of counterintuitive. You press circle to select and X to go back. So you can see we've got all of the cores installed here. But I want to change it so that circle is to go back and X is to select because that's the same as the PS4 menu. Otherwise, it's confusing. So I'm going to head down into the settings menu here head down to input, press circle on that. And then we're going to head down to menu controls, press circle on that, and then swap, OK, and cancel buttons. We're going to press circle on that, turn that on, and now we can press X to select and circle to go back. So that should fix that issue. So now we're going to go into the main menu. We're going to go down to the online updater because it looks pretty bare bones right now, and we're going to get everything downloaded. So we're going to update the core info files, and that's going to download that from the internet. And then we're going to update the assets. So once we've got the assets installed, you can see everything looks a lot better now. 
We can also update the joypad profiles, the cheats. Cheats normally take a while, there's quite a few cheats. Okay, and then we can do the databases. And then we can do the overlays. And then the GLSL shaders. So we'll select that option and get that all installed. And once that's done, you have everything installed and ready to go. And again, just like with the cores installer, if you have any problems with the network connection and you're not able to download and install these zip files using the online updater, you can also install them manually by going to buildbot.libretro.com and then going into the assets folder and then the front end folder. And then from there, you have all of the zip files there, assets, autoconfig, cheats, database cursors, database RDB, you also have uh, info, overlays, and shaders, GLSL. You want to just download those zip files, create the corresponding folders on a USB drive and extract them in there. And then you can copy them over manually using PS4 Explorer to the data folder in a folder called RetroArch that has all of those corresponding folders in there. You just copy all of the files inside and you can get everything copied over manually if you're not able to use the online updater. Okay, and now that we have everything updated, we're going to switch on over to the computer to get our games installed. So we actually have some games that we can run using RetroArch. So let's go ahead and switch on over to our computer here. So I have a few games here in this folder. So we've got a Nintendo 64 game, Ocarina of Time, of course, PS1 game, Crash Bash. And we also have a few Sega Master System games here, just as a little example. So what we're going to do is get a folder that has all of your games inside. And we're just going to copy that over to the USB drive. So copy it to a USB drive that's formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format. So from here, we're going to eject our USB drive and plug it back into the PS4. Finally, if you want to copy your games over to the internal hard drive so that you're not having to load them from a USB drive every time, then you can use PS4 Explorer, which you can find in the Homebrew store, of course. And then you can use left and right on the D-pad to switch to your USB drive find your games folder that has all of your retro games in it and press triangle over it and copy it with X and then go back to the data folder and then you can just paste it anywhere in the data folder. So we'll go ahead and just paste it in the root of the data folder, which is probably the best place to put it because RetroArch does have a, a, a file path that's already set up looking in that folder. So with that, we should be good. So we now have our games folder right here in data. So we no longer need to load it from the USB. Okay, so now we can go back on RetroArch itself here and get the final configuration set up. Then we can scroll down to the import content option and scan directory. Now you can scan your USB drive if you're wanting to load them from the USB or if you copied them to the hard drive, then you can search the data folder, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select the data folder and then the games folder, and then I can tell it to scan this directory and that will scan all of the games that I have in there, all of the retro games. Okay, scanning of directories finished, so we can go back and we should now have our games here. As you can see, we've got them all here. So we've got our Master System, we've got our Nintendo 64 and our PlayStation game there as well. And apparently we have a Super Nintendo games too. Okay, so we don't have any cover images for this, any thumbnails. So if you want to make it look a little bit nicer, once you've scanned your content, you can head back into the main menu, go to the online updater and run the playlist thumbnails updater. And then if we just select Nintendo 64 and then we'll do uh, NES and Sega Master System and then and then of course Sony PlayStation. OK, so now if we take a look at our games, we should have a thumbnail showing and there it is. So that is good. Should be the same for Ocarina of Time and our PS1 game as well, which is going to be Crash Bash. So we have got our icons showing. So let's try and run a game here. So we'll try and run it. It'll ask us which core to select first of all when it's the first time running a game. So I'll just use the Genesis Plus GX uh, core here and then run. And this should get the game loaded. Now, one of the issues that I have here, you might run into this problem, is that it's running really, really fast. So like I should not be able to jump that fast. The game is running in like fast forward right now. So the fix for this issue is if you press the touchpad and the options button down at the same time, it will open up the quick menu. And then from the quick menu here, you can do things like resume the game, restart, close the content. You can even load and save states. But if we press circle to go back, we can go into the settings menu, scroll down to frame throttle. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we have the option to sync to exact content frame rate. If we enable that option, that should fix the 
uh, the speed issue. So if we go back into the quick menu and resume the game, we should be good now. So as you can see, it is now running normally. So normal jump height and we have the game up and running. You can also do things like change the aspect ratio. If we go back into the menu here, go back, we can go into our settings, video, change the scaling. If I want to put it to 16 by 9 to fill the full screen, then I can also do that right here. So and there's loads and loads of options. There's like black frame insertion and all kinds of other options. RetroArch has a ton of options available. But yeah, as you can see, we have the game up and running right here. So let's go ahead and try the PS1 game. We'll close content and we'll try and run Crash Bash because Crash Bash is actually a two-player game. So let's try and add a second controller and play a two-player game. So I'm going to start up a second PS4 controller here. I'm going to do new user, play as a guest, and we will not sign in, of course. And that gets our second controller enabled. And then what I'm going to do here is just restart RetroArch to make sure it successfully recognizes that controller. So we get two PS4 controllers showing up configured. That is good. So now we can give this a try. We'll run Crash Bash and give it the associated core, which is going to be the Sony PlayStation PCSX and we will run this game and that should hopefully get it running there is no core there is no bios provided it's emulating the ps1 bios so i guess that could cause some slowdown it would be better to provide your own bios file for it to use rather than it emulating one but for now you know we'll just go with the emulated bios okay so so far this game is also running at the appropriate speed with the frame throttle option so we can do adventure mode, new game, two players. And if I use my primary controller, you can see player one is working. And then if I take the second controller, we've got player two also working as well. So there we go. So multiplayer with multiple controllers is also working. I've tested the save feature. That seems to be working fine, at least on PS1. Although if you have trouble saving game on other systems through RetroArch, you can just use save states instead. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, everything appears to be to be good here. So the last thing to mention is should you use RetroArch over Sony's own emulation that we've covered in previous video? Well, generally, I would say, you know, for games that you just can't run using Sony's emulators, then you would use RetroArch. For games that you can run using Sony's emulators, it's probably better to use those because, you know, they generally take better advantage of the horsepower of the PS4. So you can run the games better. They're more responsive and you can even like increase the resolution scale slightly. So it, you know, it looks more polished on the PS4, whereas this runs at like native resolution by the looks of things for the game. And it's also got more input lag and it runs a little bit slower when it comes to games like PSP and PS1. So therefore, it's better for those games to use Sony's own emulation if you can. But it's always good to have RetroArch to fall back on if there are certain games that you can't run because they're not compatible with Sony's emulator. And of course, for older retro gaming consoles that don't actually have any Sony emulators for them for the PS4, then, you know, RetroArch is the only option to run those and it does run them very well. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.